What's going on guys, it's Unbuck5 and I have not used this camera angle in a while. I mean, I've got some new gear, so I'm gonna have to get even more gear that accommodates with this new gear. Today, we have came up with all of the maps from Splatoon and Splatoon 2's multiplayer and we put them in a list and the factors that went into making this list is enjoyability, my own personal opinion, and how well each map plays into each game mode. So just keep that in mind throughout the video. Also, all footage for each map is my own, unless it indicates so down on the bottom left corner. So shout out to CF Brian, or I guess it's Ghost Brian now, and Whitehawk. Their YouTubes will be in the description down below. Also, let me know if you guys want to see more Splatoon 2 kind of videos. You know, I plan on making that since uh, Fortnite's going downhill officially. But um, without any further ado, enjoy the video. This is by far the most insulting and garbage fucking map ever introduced into a Splatoon no, no, game. No, no, no. This is not how huh? the video is going to go, okay? You have to give a viable reason and evidence to support why the maps are ranked the way they are. You can use evidence and viable reason to support. Fine, let's restart it. Let's go. S start over, start over. Coming in at number 31 is Moray Towers, a fan favorite for some reason, but it is coming in at last place. It was first introduced in Splatoon 1 and made its way on over in Splatoon 2, but really should have stayed in Splatoon 1. It's a cool concept, but the design, mainly in the slopes, make the gameplay impractical, which is a word that you'll hear me use a lot in this video. There isn't a lot of space, just narrow slopes, and so when I see this map in ranked, it's a wait another two hours. Coming in at number 30 is Flounder Heights. Now, this was a map that was only featured in Splatoon 1, and Splatoon 1 maps aren't really that good compared to Splatoon 2 maps. Now, the main problem that I see in this Splatoon 1 map is its simplicity, and it's not good simplicity either i mean you have a building in the middle and then you have the sides of the building i mean of course simplicity is good in a video game and it is actually well needed but this map just doesn't do a very good job with it if you didn't own a wii u and you were only had splatoon 2 uh you weren't missing out on much Coming in at number 29 is Snapper Canal, and I think I speak for all of the Splatoon 2 players when I say this map is not very good. Now, a lot of people have a problem with the size of the map, and sometimes you run into the enemy spawn by accident, but I think that the problem is with the size, but not that you run into enemy spawn, but because of its size, it leads a lack of intuitive gameplay. But on the same note, by no means is this a skip the rotation map. I actually almost dropped a 30 bomb in S rank on this map, so there is a bright side. Anko V Games gladly takes our number 28 spot. Given that this is a Splatoon 1 map making its way into Splatoon 2, the impracticality in Splatoon 1 really shows in this map in particular given that you have to use the fans to try and cram your way into the enemy spawns and then make a run for the objective, does not make a very fun experience. And in Turf War, players are almost unreachable due to their little ledges and them being able to stay in their own lanes. The Splatoon 1 exclusive Mahi Mahi Resort makes its way into number 27. Now, the map was cool, the concept was cool, the fact that squids die in water and you're surrounded in water was cool. The main problem with this map is that the formula of it just strayed away from all the other formula in the other maps that it just made the design of the map itself have no purpose. You could not do anything in this map with a reason, strategically. It was like it was made for Turf War. Holding down your trigger like an idiot. And number 26, the oh-so-famous Urchin Underpass. Now, I feel as though Nintendo was just trying to cater to every kind of weapon type that they introduced in the game in Splatoon 1 that they forgot about the core mechanics of the game itself. Now, I'm not saying that as if you couldn't do anything strategically like you couldn't on Mahi Mahi Resort. But, I mean, it's just way different in this map. Coming in at number 25 is Gobi Arena. Now, when I first saw the announcement that this map would be introduced into the game, I was like, okay, something different. But then, as I actually played the game more seriously, I realized that this map had the problem of being different. The design of the enemy spawn and the uninkable platforms just made it so that it strayed away from competitive. I feel like the only game mode they're thinking about was Clan Blitz. Coming in from Splatoon 1 and into Splatoon 2, just to get a number 24 on my list, is Piranha Pit. 
Now the impracticality of the map does show like all the other Splatoon 1 maps, but um, this one, the conveyor belts, it made it so that you can do damage in some game modes, but for most of the competitive game modes that you would care about, like Tower Control or Rainmaker, just made this very impractical. Yet again, another returning Splatoon 1 map is Port Mackerel. Now, ever since this came into Splatoon 2, I saw how impractical it was. I told you I'd be saying that word a lot. I mean, it's just the tightness of this map makes it so that you can't exercise any of the real multiplayer aspect of the game. I mean, it just makes me think that this should have been a hero mode map. Now, I know that this 22 spot map is going to come with some controversy. The first map of Splatoon that I've ever played, Arowana Mall. Now, the reason being that this is so low on the list and yet so much liked by fans is because it is a cool concept, you know? I feel like it was perfect for Turf War and it was more so a cool Turf War map. The real issue is that the layout of the map makes objective-based game modes very, very hard to carry out. And that is why this map is ranked at number 22. A personal favorite Splatoon 1 map of mine, unfortunately coming in at number 21, is Soul Spray Rig. Now, although this was one of my favorite maps in Splatoon, it was just so impractical to play, and like Mahi Mahi Resort, the layout of the map just made it so that you couldn't pull off anything strategic, really. And that is why my favorite Splatoon 1 map is ranked at number 21 in the overall list. Number 20 on the list goes to another map that was given birth to in Splatoon and bled on over into Splatoon 2. Camp Triggerfish. Now, just like Arowana Mall, this will probably be controversial, but I'm pretty sure you'll find my reasoning more excusable. Remember that cringy you're a kid, you're a squid now commercial for Splatoon? Well, this fits into their criteria perfectly. At least 33.3% of the map you're forced to walk on. And in all game modes, not only competitive game modes, swimming is a necessity. And that is why this map is unfortunately at number 20. Coming in at number 19, another one of my personal favorites from Splatoon 1, Firefin Depot. Now, if there any map from Splatoon 1 that needed to return into Splatoon 2, this would be it. I mean, it was impractical, but not as impractical as the other maps, which is why you see this one ranked higher than the other Splatoon 1 maps. Hopefully a new and improved version of this map finds its way into Splatoon 3. Coming in at number 18, New Albacore Hotel. Now, I was originally going to set this map way lower, but I found that I actually kind of like it. The only problem with it is that I only like it when I'm playing Rainmaker. This was one of the two maps that came out during my Splatoon 2 pause, so I wouldn't know this for sure, but I'm pretty sure that Nintendo only had this map in mind for Rainmaker itself. Blackbelly Skate Park comes in for number 17, not only releasing for Splatoon 1, but also Splatoon 2, as we all already know. This map is actually one of the best maps for competitive. That being said, it was actually terrible for Turf War, which is what you see me playing right now. I feel like this map wasn't really that good for Clan Blitz either, so that means that it was only good for Splat Zones, Tower Control, and Rainmaker. Number 16, and I feel like you guys already know why this map is almost in the middle of the list. And that is because of the grids. Kelp Dome was actually a pretty good map, despite the grids. And given that you have elongated mobility if you don't use the grids, that is why this map is in the middle of our list. This Splatoon 1 exclusive Museum di Alfonsino makes it into our number 15 spot. Now the map itself was great, but again, the rotating turbine platforms, if you will, make it very impractical. And that is why it is at number 15. Despite that, excellent map. The Splatoon 2 exclusive Schellendorf Institute makes its way in for number 14. Now when I first heard of this announcement I was actually pretty excited and I do not regret to inform you that this map did not disappoint in any aspect. I mean this map is named after Sheldon so you know it has to pack some heat. Let me know for those of you who actually got that reference. Let me know in the comments down below. I'll subscribe to you. The number 13 spot is awarded to the one, the only, Splatoon 1 exclusive, Hammerhead Bridge. I absolutely adored this map, and I think that this 
unlike kelp dome did its grid perfectly there's an underside there's an overside not that complicated the only flaw that this map has is what you get into the underside it is harder to get into the upper side rather than that excellent coming in at number 12 is snapper canal now this was the second map that came out during my splatoon 2 pause and when i came back i was actually so confused at first the layout was so different and that is what makes this map so great the player and enemy spawn are connected and from there is a downward slope usually where the objective is so that makes for so many great angles nintendo great job with this map number 11 goes to humpback pump track now you know how splatoon 1 maps are generally impractical this is what i like to call a practical map for all game modes and that is why this map is so good nintendo once again, you did an amazing job. The slopes and ramps in this map were done almost perfectly. Arowana Mall and Moray Tower, please take notes. Coming in at number 10 is Muscle Forge Fitness. Now, the reason why this is one space above Humpback Pump Track is because it's a smaller Humpback Pump Track, essentially. Uh, it allows you to get down and gritty with your gameplay and with your strategies, and um, it affords for some very practical gameplay. Coming in at number nine, we have Sturgeon Shipyard. Now, this map was absolutely beautiful. The rotating platforms, how you can go into the enemy spawn, how you can retreat back to your spawn if needed, and the way that this map copes with objective-based game modes is beautiful. 10 out of 10, honestly. I will say though, if you're getting smoked on this map, there is little you can do about it. Coming in at number eight, Starfish Main Stage. Now, the layout of this map is definitely taken for granted because not a lot of people enjoy this map. But let me just tell you, it is one of the most practical maps you will ever see in a Splatoon game. If this map can come back for Splatoon 3, I would greatly appreciate it, Nintendo. Thank you. Coming in at number seven is Wahoo World. Now, this map definitely did not disappoint in any aspect whatsoever it is so good for every competitive game mode and even okay for turf war i mean it takes uniqueness and takes it to the next level if you're going to do something unique with the game something different do wahoo world coming in at number six 20 spots above its original is the reef why is this 20 spaces above urchin underpass if it's literally a remake it's more of a redesign, but it's literally Urchin Underpass done correctly. There is absolutely a reason why the Reef is the face of Splatoon 2. Coming in at number 5 is Walleye Warehouse. I don't know what someone, someone did a review and put this at like the third worst map. They, they were smoking something, clearly. This is absolutely one of the best objective maps for... I'd say any of the objective, any four of the objective game modes, this map would be one of my number one picks. This map is definitely the face of competitive gaming in Splatoon 2. Now, coming in at number four is Manta Maria. Basically, Sturgeon Shipyard, but better. I mean, it is so much fun in Turf War, and it's even a lot of fun in any of the four competitive game modes. I mean... This, this, they knocked it out of the park with this one. Good job, Nintendo. I'm proud of you. This is definitely a map that needs to appear in Splatoon 3. Coming in at number three is Mako Mart. Now, this map is phenomenal. And when I mean phenomenal, I mean phenomenal. Not many maps were able to touch this. In fact, this map goes into another tier. And what I mean by that is that between this map and Manta Maria, there's some distance in between. This map did what Urchin Underpass tried to do and cater to every single weapon type in the game. But let's move on because I just compared Mako Mart to Urchin Underpass. Now, number two is Inkblot Art Academy. Every single section of the map feels like it flows together with the game. And whatever weapon type you're using, it doesn't matter. It just comes together with whatever game mode you're playing. Dare I say this is the best multiplayer map if it weren't for number one, which is, excuse me, we, we ran out of maps. Well, I'll just throw a salmon run map in here and then just say that it was, uh, save that for another video as long as they like. Sure can do. Absolutely. All right. Take care. Thank you. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like and I'm off to make a homemade Rice Krispie treat.